There are a number of ways that students interact and collaborate with one another in my class. Um, one of the innovations that I've used is um, a P PSA or public service announcement. So um, in this assignment, students there are multiple activities and assignments that students do um, to help one another complete those tasks. So they do multiple discussions. They view um, samples as one of their discussions. They um, also um, propose the, what topic they want to do for their um, public service announcement and of course through these discussions they interact with one, an one another they're required to respond to one, an one another um, another thing that they do is they do a storyboard and graphic organizer so um, here's an example of one of my student um, graphic organizers they actually plan and draw out what they plan on doing and how they want to film their PSA and then they post it up and provide feedback um, to one another one another through the store through the discussions um, another thing that they do is they actually research different tools of technology they want to use to film their um, to film their public service announcement and they do this in groups so you can see like multiple people are working on their slides and um, researching um, different tools of technology that they can use and by um, looking at each other's tools they can um, learn more information so as you can see um, after students have posted um, about their resource, um, students have commented directly on the slides. Um, that's a way of students interacting and actually looking at um, each other's um, information. <clears throat> After students um, post or do research on their tools of technology, they film their PSA and then um, after they finish filming it, they post their final product up on a discussion board. And so as you can see here, students have posted up their final PSA and after that, students have um, commented on each other's PSAs. So here's just an example here. So a student posted up their PSA and then students comment and view each other's um, information and provide feedback. So there's a wide range of ways that I um, promote communication between me and my students and students with um, two students. Um, the first way is I post I post many announcements, letting them know what's um, coming up, what's due. Um, students are able to email one another, but the main way is through their course content. So it's basically a website where I post all of the information that they need um, to complete the work. Um, the main place that students should go to is the schedule. So the schedule is basically what tells students um, what is coming up and what's due um, and um, when students click on the URL link um, based upon the day of which their assignments are due um, it should take them to another page the page will um, tell them what's due and they can click directly on the link so as you can see discussion one um, through discussions, many students are able to communicate with one another so here was my first discussion students were able to um, post about who they are and students were, are able to directly um, comment on each other's slides um, as well as learn more about each other. Um, through the La Lima forums, students are also able to co um, communicate with one another. With one another. So um, if you look over here, you will see a, a list of different discussions and students will um, post a response as well as comment upon one another's. And lastly, students also post up their essays um, here and students provide feedback on each other's essays. So um, here's an example of my comments on discussions and then here's an example of of, um, my feedback on students essays and students are able to directly respond to some of my feedback or they directly um, are able to make revisions to their essays um, based upon my feedback so that there we go for communication So the second um, major assignment for my um, summer online class is a um, research and argument essay. And so because this is one of the most challenging essays that I have my students do, um, there are many different activities that are um, that help students um, get to their final goal. So the first activity is um, students actually brainstorm what um, topics they want to do. So um, this link right here. Um, has them do that so here's what it looks like um, after that they watch videos um, then they try to craft a research question and um, 
in pairs, they do an activity related to practicing um, research questions. So here's some here's an example here. And then after that, they try to find one source by going to um, by going to the Hawaii legislature website because their goal is to write a letter to a senator or representative arguing for or against um, a specific topic. And then they have to practice summarizing that actual source. Um, a second activity that they have that I have them do is um, interview someone for as a source for their topic. And so um, they watch a video and um, start crafting um, questions they want to ask their interviewee. Um, and again, this is actually pulling in primary res primary sources into their research paper. Um, a third activity is having them learn how to evaluate sources using the CRAP test. And um, I also had Natalie Wall um, record herself um, sharing how to use the library database, and I posted that up on um, online. Um, a fourth activity is focusing on um, how to do MLA citations. And so um, one of the activities is to have them reading through um, you know, a guide, but they also have to do a forms and kind of like a quiz, um, making sure they're actually um, reading through the form, I mean, reading through the guide. And then I also have activities focusing on how to um, specifically quote um, correctly using MLA format. They are to complete a um, annotated bibliography. And then um, one of my last activities is having students um, learn how to craft a counter argument and um, for this activity um, students actually have um, actually in pairs for discussion six they actually choose one of the um, one of the samples that I've given them and they craft a thesis and a counter argument as practice so to prepare them for their actual essay writing a counter argument I worked really hard on making sure that my student learning outcomes align with my activities um, by doing this four-step course design process with Rachel Inake. And so um, the first thing that I had to do was list all my student learning outcomes for the course. Then I listed specific um, learning objectives for each of my assignments. And then I made sure that each of my um, student objectives or my learning objectives aligned with student learning outcomes for my course. And then I um, figured out what activities um, would actually meet up with each student learning outcome. So um, each of my sections um, are aligned and you can see that with each of my um, sections. Um, in, in addition to that, I have rubrics for all of my assignments. So that's how students are able to tell um, whether or not they're meeting um, my expectations. And so um, here's an example of a grading of a forums discussion grading rubric. And you can see my feedback at the end. Um, also, my um, students um, have um, rubrics for their uh, essays. And so um, we talk about like what my expectations are, what makes good writing. And then um, at the end of each essay, students um, reflect upon their process. Um, so this is one way that students are able to reflect upon um, their progress as well as view my feedback throughout the essays. Um, the feedback that I provide for them in their essays, um, they use um, by you know fixing all of the my comments or addressing my comments in, in their essays. So I think that's about it with making sure the students are reaching their learning objectives. So there are a number of ways that I support student learning. Um, the main homepage for La Lima um, has tabs where students can um, access different parts of the course. Um, the main way that students access it is through the course content. And um, here um, is where all of the course information is provided um, with clearly aligned tabs um, that students can click on. So the first thing that I always have students do is look at the syllabus. On the syllabus, there are a list of resources available for students. Um, there's even a section that asks whether distance learning is for them and um, show, outlines my expectations for an online class. Um, there's also a list of resources and accommodations that can, students can seek um, throughout their term as a student um, in the course. Another tab that I 
directly, immediately direct students to is the FAQs section. And so the FAQ section has um, frequently asked questions. So questions like, how do I contact my instructor? What textbooks are we using? What's the best browser for this work? How do I navigate through the course content? And so um, this is a video that I've created, um, which takes students through the whole um, course content and how to navigate it. Um, where do I submit my assignments? How do I access my pre-made Google documents? So I have students type all of their essays on Google Docs, and so I pre-make them, and so I want students to be able to access it, and so I also created a video showing that. Um, how to get an A in the class, and then what do they do if they have technology problems um, are all listed in the FAQ section. Um, I have also listed a bunch of grammar resources for students to access um, should they have any sh um, challenges with grammar as they're writing. And I am always available to meet with students um, in multiple ways. So I, of course, the first way would be through email, but um, I have also come to campus to meet with students face to face. I have also um, done Blackboard Collaborate when we had it, um, a virtual office. Um, I have also met with students on Google Hangouts as well as um, through Skype. So what really whatever is convenient for my students, I am always available to help them.